Okay, we're going to start making this content management system. We've already got the database up and running in um, MySQL, and now we need to use Dreamweaver to create the, the um, I'm going to start with the login. Um, that's probably the most important part to, to get functioning. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I'll create a new folder, new file, maybe, there we go, a new file called login.php. Now the crazy thing about this is we're going to drop it in, then we're going to immediately break it. Um, Dreamweaver's basic um, login script does not under, understand SHA-1 or any type of encryption. As soon as we add it, it's just going to go, I, it was there, but I don't know where it is anymore. And so you get a few errors from it, but the site itself will actually work. And this is what I find a lot of developers, you make a couple of things in Dreamweaver, and then you realize Dreamweaver is just a pain in the butt. I mean, it'll get you... a a large block of the code that you need, but then you'll probably be better off in Notepad where it's not going to constantly be giving you errors because you modified the code. Um, but um, I'm just going to make a very, very simple um, form. That's going to be form. We will call it form login. It will have a text field for user underscore. Wait a minute, what do we actually do with this? Users, we're going to have a structure of, they're going to log in with their email and then pass. Okay. So user underscore email. I'll just say email. And then after that will be text field. User underscore pass. Password. And I need a button at the end. Not submit, but login. Beautiful. Now, the nice thing about login is uh, it's so simple to do. I love this site's testing server. There we go. Now I can go to user authentication, login user, and oh, I don't know if I've actually set up the database yet. I have not. I always forget this step because I only need to do it once. You have to tell the computer where the database is first. So plus MySQL connection, we'll call it con underscore shelter. Username by default is always root with no password. And that should let you in. Um, that's really bad, but that's okay for your um, development stuff. When you actually get, uh, when we put stuff up on GoDaddy, you always get username and password. Nice randomly generated one. So testing. It'll dream over and yell at you because you don't have a password. That's good. Okay, now that I'm connected to the database, I can actually log in a user and it will talk to the database. Good. Table users, email, password is pass. Usually these are good. Username field is, these are reversed. There we go. If logging in succeeds, then um, this is the part that is a little bit confusing. Um, but what we can do is have it go. Uh, if you remember, the requirement is that we have an admin section and then a section that can controls everything. Only admins are allowed in. <laughs> and then a section that's allow an individual user to control their stuff. What I'm going to tell you is that you should send them to the admin homepage. And I'm going to do it like this. We'll create an admin folder. Send them in there first. So if they're an admin, they go right to where they need to. If not, if they're a regular user and they're not supposed to be an admin, that's going to have the protection script on it that kicks you out. And we're going to have it kick them out to the regular minion pages where they can go edit stuff. Um, if login fails, send them back to login.php. And here's the important part. You actually have to get their user level. So you get their username, their password, and their access level. And we created an entire column just for that. So it's a third variable in there that's either going to say user or admin. And click OK. And this added a ton of... PHP code, um, but I will go ahead and create a new folder called admin, and inside there I will put 
Python file index.php and you just say J. Now I have no idea if I actually ad added information into this or not. I did not. I don't have any um, data in here. So I'm going to insert my and I'm going to have to type that in a bunch of times. So. User level is going to be, I'll be an admin for starters. Okay. So I'm an admin now. I can actually go in, so we should be able to go into login and preview this page in Opera for some reason. Did I have this backwards? I did? Okay. It's backwards for some reason. That's weird. Okay, that's fine. All right, so email and then one, two, three, four, five, six. When I click login, it lets me go to index. Um, if I try this again, but I go to Actually, do an inline edit on this. We're allowed to do that and change that from admin to user. Save it. This time, oh, it's still cached. I need to log out before it'll let me do that. So I can create a logout page. This one, if you remember, is really, really simple. File new, a blank PHP page. Save it as log out.php. And this time the server behavior is log out user when the page loads and then just send them back to. I guess you'd actually want to send them to index.php, your home page typically. This, we don't have that, so it's just going to say not page not found. But if I preview this, maybe. Let's log in. I have to send it to the wrong place. I did. Oh, okay. So I'm logged out. Uh, I accidentally put login. That's okay. Um, but now, if I go in here, I set myself up as a user, not an admin. Uh, it's still not working. That's okay. It's actually kind of supposed to. So the reason it's not working quite properly is that this index.php in my admin doesn't have a restrict user um, function on it. So when you restrict the access to this page, we're using access levels. And you only have to set this part of it up once. When you add this to subsequent pages, all of these levels will come through. But you can define the different levels. So I want admins and I want users. And we can have one more public. I think we were. But you can define as many as you want, however many levels you think you're going to need. So the only ones who are allowed in, into this area is going to be admins. If not, then in sending, instead of sending them back to the login screen where they could get the opportunity to log in again, what I'd actually rather send them over to is um, I'll create a folder called my and we'll send them to index.php inside of here. We create a new index inside of here and say, this is my users. That's my admins. Okay, now let's see if stuff, if this whole thing starts to actually work. Okay, I logged out. I'm going to log in. What did four, five, six? It actually went to the admin page, said, you're not allowed in here, and then kicked me over to the users page. But if I actually am a user or an admin, it should let me stay in the admin area. So let's try that. Got to make sure that this works, that I'm not missing some microscopic little part. 
and then save. Really log out that PHP. Log back in. Three, four, five, six. Now it lets me. It stays in the admin section. Make sense? Cool. Uh, the only other thing that I want to be able to add to this is to SHA the passwords when you go in and um, uh, enter these. It makes it a lot more difficult for anyone who might hack this to want to give this away. But right now my password is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, pretty simple. But in order for SHA to work, you have to when you register, you have to SHA the password. So I have to have this as the, the encrypted form right now, um, which means I need PHP to give me that. Um, and I'm going to create a, a test file. I often have just a file called test.php just to run some kind of um, script or another. I don't really care about this stuff. PHP echo SHA-1 Is that right? Yeah. Cool. That's what my encrypted password should be. So I'm going to copy that. Uh, there it is. And this time... There we go. Now, it's actually back in login that you need to, to worry about this, and I have a font set incredibly large. But this, these codes, you, I, I have gotten very, very familiar with them over the years because it's the exact same functions I've been using for a long time. But you should see an S, something that looks like SQL. There we go. Select user email, user password, user level from users where the user email equals percent %s and user password equals percent s. Okay, so it sounds like it looks like these are variables of some kind. And what's actually going on is there's this really, really nice function called sprint f. What it will do is percent s is a placeholder, is effectively a variable, and this right here is the um, are the arguments for this sprint f function. And it will go do get value, get SQL value string of login username, whatever that is, and password. Well, these are actually defined a little bit earlier, password and login username as coming from the post. I know that's a little cumbersome to go through those different um, steps, but it makes it so that Dreamweaver can write the same sort of code, canned code for everything. And then there's this get SQL value string. This one is a sanitizer function. It's this thing right here. What this does is it will take some sort of uh, whatever comes through the post or get that we send through it and it will convert it and sanitize it and scrub it and pull out all the uh, HTML, PHP, and SQL that happens to be in it. And what it will end up doing is uh, where is it? My real escape string, escape string, HTTP, I can't remember what, everything else that it does. Uh, get magic quote, strip slashes. Do you remember doing those last year? Uh, it will basically take, if you put in a delimiter, it will go grab the character entity code, the ampersand COPY semicolon kind of code. It, it'll replace it with that. So if somebody tries to write a bunch of JavaScript, or a bunch of PHP code, or even a bunch of SQL, they can write it all they want. It's going to get in, put into the database as something completely harmless, as, as weird text that could never be interpreted as being run in any way. That's the major reason why we have those HTML character entities now. Um, so this function, Dreamweaver puts it at the top of every single um, PHP thing that touches the database, and it just runs everything through it. So what the heck does that mean? Basically, um, you can do this in a couple of different ways. This is probably the easiest one. This is actually adding it directly into the SQL. I'm not actually doing a PHP command. SQL can actually do a SHA-1. Um, 
If you want to get more complicated, you can nest these a couple of times. So when it creates a password, it does an MD5, then a SHA, then it's something, then it's something, then it's something. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing too many of those because eventually your database, it actually, if you get a lot of users, encryption is a pretty processor intensive thing. You don't want it to be doing 50 encryptions on every password. Um, two or three is probably more than enough. Because if they were to encrypt at the first level, they'd still get gibberish and think that they're doing it wrong. That's what you want to have happen. Okay, this I think will work. Probably not. Okay, uh, let me log out first. Blah, where are you going? Stop, 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 stop. Go back. Basically, it works if it did the if it goes the exact same place. Okay, so in that instance, it's actually it takes whatever password you type type in, does the SHA encryption to it, and it compares that to the SHA encryption in the database. And you never ever ever have to even care what the user's real password is. It's in their brain, and that's it. <laughs> Um, the only downside to this is if you want to send somebody their password, if they, it, you know, a forget password type of thing. So you can't. There's no way to, there's no reverse SHA um, encryption algorithm or anything. So what you end up doing is, um, this is the websites where they say, click here to send a reset email. You get the email to your account. You click on a link and it says, enter a new password, enter a new password, and then you, it just reshaws that password and writes it over the old one. Um, that's the only way to, to take care of that. If you actually store the password, then you can send it back to them in, in an email. Um, but it's not quite as secure. Any questions on that so far? Yeah. I was going to say, what about like the websites where like they'll send you back like some gibberish email? Is that like a script that? Like, like whenever it sends back and it's like, oh, your password is like QX H1, like it's like oh, a temporary. Yeah, like, then they're usually doing some sort of uh, random generation of a password for you. Um, I actually did that with the Flux website to create the um, the code, the redeemable codes that the teachers send back to students. Um, and what I actually had to do, I had to write a function that would randomly generate six characters and capitalize them, um, and then it takes that and searches the database for it. And as long as it doesn't find it, then it emails it to the student. If it finds it, it, it exits out and calls itself again and just keeps doing it until it gets one that's, that isn't already in the database. But yes, you can, you can get it to do that. Here's your temporary password. Um, then what you'll have to do is randomly generate a password update the database to the new shod version of that and then send them an email saying this is your new temporary password and you probably need a checkbox somewhere saying that you're on temporary password make them go through it again some sort of password field oh. now as complicated as it sounds um, it's not that complicated for users to do and you're adding a lot of value to the website to make it so that the, you do not have to manage the passwords. You can let the idiots, I mean the users, do it themselves. That's incredibly useful. Um, okay. So what else do you guys want to see? I think that's about all I really cared about for this. Got that, we got that. Yeah, on and oh, this is exactly what happens when Dreamweaver starts seeing when you mess with the login script, it doesn't understand SHA one. SQL is perfectly fine with it, which is what matters, but Dreamweaver starts going, I don't know what that is. It kinda recognizes it, but it kinda doesn't, so weird things will start happening. Um, which is perfectly fine. We I, you honestly don't care if Dreamweaver can do it or not. You want you want the browsers and the server to actually work with it. Anything else you guys are curious of seeing right now? 